Hey y'all, it's Morgan. Welcome to my happy place. I was starting a fermentation project and I uh, thought maybe y'all would be interested in it. Um, I'm actually going to ferment some peppers so that I can make a hot pepper salt sauce. Um, I am doing a uh, cayenne pepper and I'm actually doing green um, instead of allowing them to ripen for the traditional red, which I may do with some other ones. Uh, I am going to go ahead and do the green. Now, I just went outside and picked everything that, you know, was pickable on um, my cayenne pepper bush. So I had started this and thought, well, maybe I should film it. It's been a little while. So let me tell you what I've done so far. I have gotten some water and I just used tap water. We do have um, a little bit of chlorine in, my in our tap water. Um, and a lot of people do recommend not using chlorine because it can inhibit um, fermentation. I personally have not had a problem with it. Uh, if you are concerned or um, you know, you can use, you can definitely use water, just cover it lightly and uh, let it sit out for 24 or 48 hours and the chlorine should dissolve. And um, you know, if you have RODI water, which I do for my fish tanks, but again, I'm just using tap. So I have um, here one and a half liters of tap water to which I have added uh, the kosher salt. This is the salt I'm using. Um, the reason I'm using kosher salt is because you do not want any added uh, like anti-caking agents um, and things like that, which is found a lot of times in traditional table salts. Now, you can also use pink Himalayan, anything, uh, or just or canning salt, anything that doesn't have those added ingredients. So I'm using this because it's what I have on hand and I use weight rather than volume for the salt because a coarse salt and a fine salt is not going to be the same amount. Now for peppers, because they tend to um, mold more easily than some other uh, fruits and vegetables, they're a low acid basically, um, I'm go going to use a little bit higher uh, brine percentage. It's three and a half percent. So I have um, I actually had to do this in two batches because I started to do um, like a liter and realized that um, I didn't have enough. So I just did another little bit. And I believe it is per half liter, um, let me think, it was 18 grams of salt. So I just measured that out, mixed it up, and it has dissolved. These have been cleaned. This just came out of the sanitized um, cycle of my dishwasher. And I have rinsed my peppers. I have not um, scrubbed them. You actually want the yeast that are naturally occurring on the peppers. That is what um, kind of gets the fermentation process going. So nothing too complicated here. I'm just gonna put these in my clean jar. And I had washed everything down, including the counter, so I'm not too worried if one falls there. The floor would be another story. Because they have not been cleaned since last night. And ew, floors. Okay. So just squish them all down in there as best you can. This is, you don't have to be gentle with them. Um, it's not going to be the end of the world if any of them get a little squished or broken. Because uh, let's face it, at the end we're making sauce and they're all going to be uh, ground up later anyway. Uh, so let me get these in. Now the important, most important part of um, fermentation when you're doing any sort of vegetable or fruit is to um, make sure that everything is below the brine. The little saying is, uh, it's fine below the brine. Anything that sticks up out of the brine is at risk for mold. And if you get any mold in your fermentation, you need to pitch it. Some people will tell you, oh, you could just scrape the mold off and keep going. No, if you get mold, you need to pitch it. There is some, uh, you'll get some foam sometimes, or for lack of a better term, scum, which is normal uh, as long as it does not have a off scent or, you know, just frankly mold growing on top, um, then it's okay. It should have a pleasant, uh, fermenty aroma as it starts for uh, fermenting. Um, so basically, I've just added my brine solution, and now 
as you can see, they want to float, and all of these are sticking up above the, the brine, so those are not fine. Now, I have like little fermentation weights and things like that. I have special crocs, but I like using the glass jars because I can see what's going on. They'll change color. You'll see some bubbles and stuff happening, and it's just kind of cool to watch, and you also have a better idea of what's going on. Now, what I'm going to use today, anybody can do. There's no special equipment. This is just a half gallon canning jar that I'm using. And then I am actually just going to use a Ziploc bag. Now, I did not prepare additional brine uh, for this. And I do recommend brine, not just water. Um, so I'm gonna do a little quick brine. It shouldn't take much. And Let's see, I have a, a little fermentation chart that is, you know, I found it online and I use that and I find it very, very uh, helpful because it gives you your percentages if you want to do a three and a half percent or some things you can do a two percent, uh, some things might be a five percent. So it has all of that. Uh, you can just do a search engine, search engine search to get it. Now, the reason that I am using brine here uh, as opposed to water is because we are using a plastic bag and should this plastic bag develop a leak and I have water in here it's going to dilute my brine and I would likely lose my whole batch so I'm going to add some brine to this just a little bit for now you don't really need much and then what I'm going to do is use this as my weight. So I'm going to put the bag in there and make sure I get all my little stems and things pushed underneath. And what I like about using these bags is that it molds to the shape of your container, whatever it may be. And you can put as much or as little um, solution in there. Some people use marbles or you know like I said I do have a a little fermentation weight um, this is glazed and I could actually set it in there just like this and it would work fine but I do like and sometimes I'll even set it inside the plastic bag but I do like using this so the reason and then I'm going to fold this down and the reason that we want to do this is this will allow carbon dioxide that's going to be produced during the fermentation process to escape, but it's going to keep out bugs and mold and uh, bacteria and yeast that is naturally occurring in the air. Now, there is a type of yeast, it's called Kahm, K-A-H-M, I think I've got that right, yeast, and it is harmless, and it occurs very frequently in uh, fermented items. So don't be alarmed about that. Um, if you have something growing that is pink or orange, throw it out. That is not good, that is mold. Um, now I just take the ring that normally goes on the canning lid. Let's see if you can see that, yeah. Um, and I just set it over the top, kind of push it down a little bit. I don't like clamp it down, but this just kind of keeps everything in place. There's still room for the, the gases to escape as they occur um, and to, just to prevent evaporation and things like that. Now that's another thing. You have a brine in here, okay? Evaporation will occur and it's going to get more salty unless you use your lid to go under the ring. And I'm kind of a fan of not having that, which is why I fre frequently use the weight but just for the sake of this. All right, that's it. My fermentation is now going. So I will set this on my kitchen counter over in a corner actually where it's nice and dark. Um, and the temperature is stable. It will start uh, fermenting within a couple of days. You should probably start seeing some changes in the color um, and you will start to see little bubbles and things and that's perfectly, that's exactly what you wanna see. Um, but I will not consider this done until 
honestly, I'll probably go a month or better. Um, at two weeks, it probably will be nicely fermented, but you do get a better depth of flavor, um, you know, just more complex flavors when you allow it to go longer. So I'll just let it go until, you know, I feel like it's right. Um, at that point, I'm hoping to make a video, but if I forget, I will give you a little brief synopsis of what would happen next. So at that point, once it's fermented, I will take the peppers out. I will run them through a food processor or a blender and get them down to a very fine pulp. Um, you can then, you can use it as is that way if you want to, if you want a chunky sauce, but I will run mine through uh, probably a food mill or just a sieve. And so I'll get more of a smooth textured sauce. Um, you can add, of course, some of the brine to it, which will have that nice salty flavor as well as the spice from the peppers. And um, then I will add some vinegar. Now, fermented products are already acidic, but I will add vinegar to it, and that way uh, I will assure, and honestly, I, I don't have a, an amount. I will add a little here and there and just check it with a pH meter that you can get online for 10 or $11 and that's going to be accurate enough for our purposes and I will check the pH and you really want it to be um, I like to have it at a good four if not lower if possible um, the, other than salt and the vinegar that you would put in it that is it it is ready to go it can be put on the counter in an airtight uh, container or it can be put in a refrigerator for just an extra measure of safety but basically at that point we will have um, basically like green Tabasco sauce now if I let these peppers ripen and red uh, become red then we would have our traditional red type of Tabasco sauce um, so that is it um, we do have I do still have some kefir going this is a, a keep uh, some that's brewing right now and have a little grains in there and we do have a goat who had kids and we um, when we have goat's milk I have done some goat's milk kefir um, also really yummy but if you would like to see any more information about fermentation um, any topics like that please leave comments down below and I would be happy to try to do that I do have some vinegars going at the moment um, I have some malt vinegars and I also am trying a bourbon vinegar that I need to actually check and see where we are now. It's been there for a couple of months. All right, guys. Thanks for stopping in. Hope you enjoyed it. See you soon.